What's up, Michael Bumpus? Once again with Seattle Sports, it's time for the game-changing plays of the week as the Seahawks lost to the Panthers 30-24 to at home. Devastating loss was a must-win game in my book. Let's break down some of the plays. All right, this first play we're breaking down is the first play from scrimmage for the Seattle Seahawks, an unfortunate interception by Geno Smith, and the Seahawks are going to break down what happens here. All right, first, let me draw a guy back here. There is a safety back here, okay? You can't, you can't really see him, but there is a safety back here now let's focus on what we're going to see from this defense okay right here is your flat defender he is going to break towards the flat anything that threatens the flat he's going to take it and here is your your deep third type look right here okay we got this safety out here in the back this corner has deep there's there it looks like more like a cover three look what's going to happen offensively is that we're going to have uh, DK Metcalf is going to run a nice little speed out right there, okay? Nice little speed out. He's going to attract this defender. He's going to flow with him. What Lockett is going to do is he's going to inside release, and he's going to break to the corner, all right? This is an interception by Geno, and the reason why he throws his interception is just because he's late getting to the corner, and he, he's not disciplined with his eyes, right? His eyes take the defense where he wants to go. So this is the setup. This defender down here, your deep third defender, is going to jump on DK Metcalf right now. It's in the game plan. If you see DK, he's in your zone. You jump on him now. He sees Tyler Lockett goes deep. He passes him off to a safety. But what happens is Geno doesn't have eye discipline and allows this defender right there to read what he is doing, get off of DK, and drop to that corner, ends up intercepting the football. All right, here's your mid-route look, okay? We got Geno down here. He's running that out. All right, we have our deep third defender right here. He has passed this guy off right here to the safety he's focused on dk this is his help right here he's going to flow underneath obviously this is the picture not the actual video so use your imagination right here what's going to happen is tyler lockett is going to run this corner right there there's a safety back here lurking he is going to flow down and stay on top that's his job now it's his responsibility he has no other threat up the middle he's going to jump on the corner okay Final shot. Now, here's your safety in the back. You see him over the top of the corner. Here's your flat defender. He gave DK the attention that he needed. All right, he's got to help right there. Now, Gino, his arm is separated from the football. You see him in that throwing motion right there. His eyes are downfield. Now, look at him. He's going to break on the corner because this throw is late. Because we got Tyler Lockett flowing to the corner right there. He undercuts that thing. Easy interception. The very first play from scrimmage, not how you want to start the game. All right, there's a the final look right there. You see your defender. He's underneath. Safety over the top. You got flat help right there. All bad. I'm going to show you the end zone and let you know how Geno Smith kind of tipped this thing off. All right, here's the end zone. Geno is supposed to be rolling to his left, okay? Once he stops his feet and he starts to square up and stare down Tyler Lockett right there, there's a corner over here that you can't really see. He's right there. He's reading his eyes. If Geno wants to make sure that throw to Tyler Lockett is open, he's going to continue to roll, and he's going to keep his eyes in the flat. What that does, it takes everybody over there, and it leaves space for Tyler Lockett to work because he half rolls, squares his shoulders up. That corner that you can't really see drops underneath that, undercuts it, interception. Horrible way to start the game for the Seahawks. All right, another game-changing play was the second interception by Geno Smith. Here's the situation. It's 39. It's 17 to 7. The Hawks are driving to try to cut into this lead before halftime. Now, this was controversial right here. If you look at this right here, this guy here at the bottom, this guy at the top of your screen here are going to look to jump off sides. There's a reason why Geno throws this interception because he sees these guys jump before the ball is snapped. In his mind, he's thinking, I have a free play. What's a free play? When you get that offside look, the referees allow you to continue. As a quarterback, I'm thinking, I'm just going to throw the football up and maybe something magical happens. If I happen to throw an interception, it's, it's not going to count. We're going to run this play all over again. That's what Geno is thinking. Now, we're going to switch to the end zone, and I'll show you exactly what the Panthers did to make this confusing. They did, did a good job there, but let's talk about what we're seeing. All right, he's going to work. The concept at the top of the screen, you got Lockett in the slot right here. Boom, you got DK up top there. What's going to happen is Lockett is just going to run that basic clear out. DK is going to get underneath, boom, and try to make a play right there. Geno Smith gets to his back foot. He tries to toss it to DK, thinking I got a free play because these guys down here are going to jump. He jumps early. He jumps early. Geno says, I'm good to go, all right? 
I'm going to just take a risk. Back foot, doesn't matter. No consequences there. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. He throws an interception trying to find DK Metcalf. All right, here's the middle of your play. You got the work in the slot there, and we're there. Still going to clear out. You got DK underneath. They're going to collapse on that thing. We're going to get an interception right here. We got pass pro by Travis Homer there. There's some stuff going, in, going on in the box that I want to show you here soon. Here we go, Gino gets to his back foot. Tyler Lockett has grabbed the attention of the safety. He's gonna clear him out right there, but we got linebacker there and corner there collapsing on DK. Gino makes the throw. Poor decision if you don't know what you're looking at. All right, let's take a look at the end zone of Gino's second interception. The Panthers do a good job dialing up a blitz right here. I don't want you to look at Big Abe right here, uh, your right tackle. He's one-on-one -on -one with this guy right here. What the Panthers do a great job of doing, they engage Abe with this guy right here. Once he engages, this guy now drops into the flat. And then what they do is they loop this linebacker around, boom, to shoot the gap, knowing that our guy here, Travis Homer, is responsible for this edge rusher right there. All right, he gets him, bam, they connect there. So now with Abe engaged with this guy right here, bam, then he drops into space. This guy looping in late, lots of confusion on that offensive line, allows this guy to get a clear shot at Geno Smith. Geno thinking, look, I'm getting pressure right there. I got a free play. I'm just gonna let the football go, but obviously he throws a pick, don't get the call on offsides. All right, here's the second look at that deal. Like I mentioned, Abe is engaged with this guy right here. You see him starting to get into that drop. Look at this, big number 49 all by himself, gonna get pressured there. You got Travis Homer doing his job there. Everywhere else is locked up. You got bodies on bodies everywhere you go, but because they play this game with Abe Lucas there, that allows for pressure, which also forces Geno to not follow through on his throw and make an even poor throw, not giving DK a chance. All right, here's the end result there. Abe Lucas looking around saying, oh my gosh, they got me. My guy's dropped into space. Clear shot right there. We're gonna end up helping right there, but it just doesn't work out. So there's a combination of things that happen right here, right? You got Geno Smith thinking he's got time because he feels the jump on the edge. And then you also have Abe Lucas engaging with a defensive lineman. He drops, you send the backer up the gut. It's the perfect storm. They get away with an offsides and then they dial up a really good blitz, which forces Geno to not follow through on his throw, throw off his back foot interception. All right, this right is a crucial drive right before the half. This is going to make the score 20 to 14. You feel a, a bit better about where the Seahawks are. Remember, remember, they started the game. They throw an interception on the very first play from scrimmage. They throw another interception. They're behind the eight ball. This drive makes everything better. They go nine plays, 46 yards. You find DK for a touchdown. Here's what happens, all right? So down at the bottom, let's look at the route concepts that we're going to see. We're going to see Tyler Lockett. With a little drag, he gets behind this defender. He's going that way. His job is to pull this safety with him. All right, pull that safety with him. We got DK in the slot up here. What he's going to do, he's just going to work the seam and try to stay wide, anticipating that that safety is going to be pulled over by Tyler Lockett. Up top, you got a nice little five and in. Okay, with everything being cleared out, if you need to, you can work Marquise Goodwin right there. Geno makes a great throw right here. The window was so small to DK, but he finds a way to zip it in there. Everyone does their job right here. That's why they're able to make this play happen. All right, here we go. We got Tyler Lockett right here clearing the linebacker. He's about to bend. We call that the bender route. His job is to pull that safety up here with him. He does just enough of that, just enough of that to create a window. You got Marquise Goodwin at the bottom. He's running that in. He's pulling this guy with him as well. So now Geno's locked in. He goes, look, everyone's doing their job. I got to find my guy, DK Metcalf. DK does a good job of running the seam, not getting pushed too far inside. If DK gets pushed inside this way, he's going to bring that safety into play. He does a good job of staying vertical. Geno sees that, and he's going to put a dart on a line and hit DK in the end zone, a small window to work with there. All right, here's the end result of that play. Look how tight this window is, man. You got your safety right there. You got your corner right there. The ball, I know it's hard to see, is right here. He slips it in there. Boom, good touchdown. That makes it 14 to 20. The Seahawks get the ball coming out of the half. You are feeling really good about their chances now. All right, this was a huge play by the defense. The Panthers are driving. They're on a 14 play, 66 yard drive. The score is 20 to 17. If the defense is not going to stop right here, the chances for the Hawks coming back and winning this game go to slim to almost none. Here's what happens right here. This is fourth and three. 
fourth and three, this defense bows up. All right, let's talk about what this offense is going to do. You're going to have this guy down at the bottom. He's going to try to work the back of the end zone. Our guy right here in the slot is going to hitch up. Boom, there. Then we're going to have this guy go wide to the sideline, okay? They're pulling defenders with them. This guy right here is going to try to hitch it up right there as well. What they're doing is trying to expand and hit these seams on fourth and three. One, I think the Panthers are crazy. They threw the ball four times when they're down here inside the five, but that's not my problem, okay? What's going to happen is you're going to see the Hawks are playing kind of like a, a cover three look, right? So you got our guy here. We're going to have our deep thirds. Bam, our safety is going to rotate towards the middle. Boom, we're going to have deep thirds there. Then we're going to work the flat right here. You got Kobe Bryant right there. He has the flat, but if anything hooks up right here, he is taking it. That's exactly what happens right here. Let's look at this next slide. All right, here's the in-between. You got Kobe Bryant doing a good job of rerouting this guy right here. He's going to pass him off to his boy who's working the corner. He's rerouting. Now his eyes are right there, okay? He's working it. He's like, I'm going to help my corner out, reroute him, slow him down. Then I'm going to get my eyes there, all right? We got our guy working the flat, okay? We got our running back out the backfield, all right? DJ Moore actually runs inside there instead of the flat. And then we have our tight end working the corner there. Everybody is where they're supposed to be. You got bodies on bodies. You're making it difficult for Sam Darnold. But the key to this whole thing is what happens in the box. All right, we got bodies on bodies, bam, body on body, body on body, body on body, body on body, body on body. This defense is looking good right now. Now let's focus on what's going on right here. You have Sam Darnold surrounded. He's already looking for an escape route. You got linemen looking back at defensive linemen. That's always a bad thing when your linemen are looking back, but Sam Darnold is trying to escape. But Sam also realizes it's fourth and three. I can turn the ball over right here and, I, and it's not gonna be a big deal. Worst case, he just has to make a play. He tries to do that. This is what he tries to do. The ball is here. He's trying to make a chest pass. He's getting tackled. You got 9-7 on him right there. You got Chenna right there. We got help on the way. He is being hit. He tries to chest pass into the end zone. We break this up. Should have been an interception by Quandre Diggs. I'm sure he's looking at this film, hitting himself in the head. There's the final result. We got the chest pass, and we got it all covered up, man. Quandra right there could have made a play. Now, the Seahawks ended up losing this football game. The offense would get the football and have to put it on the foot and, and punt. But if this play doesn't happen, they don't even have the opportunity to really take the lead in this game. The Hawks fell short this week, but those were the plays that I felt really influenced the identity of this game. The offense turning the football over, but then responding with a touchdown to DK Metcalf, and then the defense holding strong inside the five and giving this offense a chance to go out there and win the game. Yes, the Panthers ran the ball all over the Hawks, but with all that being said, they still had a chance to win the game. Unfortunately, they don't get it done. Those are my game-changing plays.